So we're at that time of year again where year is finishing, Christmas is over, and we don't have to think about that Folgers incest family advert again. I mean, are they gonna fuck? How the fucked? <laughs> what are you doing? You're my present this year. So now that Christmas is officially over, end of year means I can just get rid of this now. Shit, my bubble. <clears throat> so let's look back at the games I played in 2022. So we kickstart January 2022 with what I always do. Yep, still not over the end of that game. Pretty much spent the entirety of January only crafting and got everything up to level 90. Because that's how much free time I had. And then comes the first official release of this year. Pokemon Arceus. Arceus is just what the Pokemon franchise needed. Something new, something exciting, something that held my attention for a long, long time. Changing to a more Monster Hunter formula really worked for the franchise. And here's me sitting there thinking, oh, I hope this keeps up until November. But we'll get to that point soon. So after spending way too many hours on Pokemon, next comes... Yeah, I don't have a physical version of this game. Funny story, I actually had a friend in the game store who got me this game for free. So that was a good excuse as any to play. Horizon is a series of a fantastic set of games, but their releases always seem to be overshadowed by something bigger, which is really unfortunate. I mean, this next game wasn't the big release of February, but it was a game that made me start streaming. Twitch.tv forward slash blank the mage, you know. I'll be there. Times. Apart from 14 and 9. It's probably one of my favourite Final Fantasies. So, the round off the games I played in February. The Big Boy. I think I broke the game. I didn't. It was fine. Ah yes, Elden Ring. The game I really thought I wasn't going to complete. I thought I was going to get through it in about two hours and then get so frustrated that would end like every other, other Souls games I've ever played. But wow, I fell in love with this game. I don't know if it was the open world or just the effort I put into it, but I seemed to really enjoy myself. And I was happy that I managed to platinum a Souls game for the first time in my life. I was drawn into this weird crap sack world and all these lovely characters that I met especially. I never thought a Souls game would have such a dorky character in it that I completely fell in love with. Even funny that part near the end game where you find a um, where you find a doll of her and you just sit there and try to talk to it until she finally gets annoyed at you and starts talking back. It's adorable. I just want to put her in a mason jar. Now on to Smarch, Kerbal. I'm gonna stop talking to tossing my games because I think I'm starting to break them. Oh yeah, Kirby in the Forgotten Land. I think in recent memory this is one of the first big releases of Kirby that I've played in a while. And yeah, obviously I streamed this one. I mean, I even lost my shit online about it. <laughs> <laughs> Next in March I played... I didn't realise how much I was going to fall in love with Tunic. Cute little fox game that looked like Zelda. And then having an instruction book as a mechanic was just such a great inclusion. I even did that little maze on the last bit by myself. I actually penned it on a, um, on a piece of paper. Got it wrong, but I tried. Looked at it online, got, got the right answer. I even went for the game so thoroughly that I missed the entire ending because I just went for the straight for the good ending apparently. So coming up to April and the major PS5 releases I bought this year have been Child's Game Where the real men play. Lego Star Wars. What else do I say? It's Lego and it's Star Wars. I love Lego and I love Star Wars. Still haven't finished it. So around May and June there was not many new releases that came out for me. But I managed to find some games I have been meaning to play for ages and just got round to playing them this time. Like... Never thought I was going to like Isomnium as much as I did. Got totally engrossed in the story. And I think, slight spoilers here, that the way the game works, how it flows into like, whatever choice you made. I think I made the best choice first, which made me keep on engaged and wanting to go for the other choices. Because I think if I pick any other ones and see that is a total arsehole, I don't think I would have liked it as much. That's the only bit of gameplay I've got of this that I recorded is this bit. Quality visual storytelling. I also got around to playing Turner Boy Commits a Tax Evasion, which was a hell of a funny game. Don't think I've laughed so hard in a game in a long time. 
So coming in July, I had three of the most anticipated games I've been waiting for this year. Starting with Klonoa. You can't see that. Where's Klonoa? Klonoa. It's a very shiny game. Ah, Klonoa. What can be said about Klonoa? Well, I made a video about it. There it is. There's Klonoa. Go watch it. It's fun. Had some of the most favourite edits that I ever did this year. Shortly after Clone Wars, we got a remake of a Super Nintendo classic, which we never got in the UK. Live Alive! You know I can see why this game bombed in the 90s. It was way ahead of its time. Having eight different stories that just merged together near the end, remaking it in the same style as Octopath Traveler, and rebooting the music, which, honestly, banger. Actually become one of my favourite RPGs. Coming up the last weekend in July, we got a game that came out that everyone was anticipated for. No, not that. Digimon Story. I didn't expect this game to be so brutal. I mean, one of the deaths of the kids is like brutal and horrifying. I mean, I don't want to kind of show it because of spoilery stuff, because I want people to play this, but like... Oh, Jesus. I actually have a video planned about my experiences with Digimon and how I grew up with it. And I was going to talk in depth about Digimon's story in it, so I think I'll keep my in-depth analysis of it until then. Otherwise, great game. Bit long. Very long. We'll fast forward through August, because if if I haven't mentioned a game during a month, I've probably been playing Final Fantasy XIV. We get in the month of September, and this month is my personal game of the year that came out. I mean, it's surprising considering, you know, God of War's coming up soon. Has not come out yet, Elden Ring's already been out, but yeah. This game I was really really excited for. It's something that I've always loved, even from my childhood. It's something I endlessly quote to this day. And it's Return to Monkey Island. I love the Monkey Island series so much. Ever since I was a kid. I remember my brother playing it and not letting me play it because he said it'd be too hard. Which to be fair I was a dumbass like six year old. Probably is true. But getting to play this game and experience it and having the ending that, while not many people liked, it was the ending that I wanted. It's the ending how I think the game should end. And if they make more, that'd be great, but if they don't, then it's the story that I've always needed and forever happy to have. It's now we're in Spooky Month. Mario Rabbids. Nothing spookier. Oh yeah, sequel to the game that shouldn't have worked, but worked really well. I enjoyed this one, but it just didn't grip me the same as the first Mario Rabbids game. I just can't seem to get how it didn't grip me as much. Maybe because it was just something that just that wasn't expected, and didn't expect to be so good. But yeah, still, otherwise a great game, but really have a fondness of the first game. Now we get to the big boys in November. You know what it is. God of War Ragnarok. I think everyone's had their opinion on this game, you know, from the fantastic storytelling to, you know, the hint system. But yeah, I enjoyed this game from start to finish, and near the end, I was gutted. I mean, don't want to get the smaller territory, he's only been out for two months, but like... <sighs> yeah. Just, no, it's a really engaging story, and it made me sad towards the end. You know what the next November game is, don't you? Pull on Scarlet and Violet. A game that really, 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 really shouldn't have been released in November. But, again, everyone's, everyone said the same things. This game's buggy as shit. Lags a lot. It shouldn't have been released. Again, anywhere. It's a hell of a fun game. And it also gave me one of my new favourite Pokemon. Look at it. Little cycle gremlin goblin thing. Can't, can't not love it. Unless you're a Golvenite fan. I have and still am having so much fun with Pokemon, as I always do. And I know I'm part of the problem, I'll buy the games no matter what. Just a shame that they didn't do some of the quality of life and some of the stuff that they did from Arceus in this game. Hopefully, the next game, whenever that gets rushed out, has the best of both. Maybe just, maybe, doesn't get completely rushed out and. It actually feels like a finished game. So now we've called up to December and 
Well, nothing really came out this month. I finally, ugh, I finally managed to play Vampire Survivors, and oh boy, that game is good. I didn't expect a, a what do you call it, a reverse bullet hell to be this engaging. I've spent way too many hours in it, and I still haven't finished it yet. And honestly, I'm thinking about it right now. I'm kind of just want to finish up this video and play more. And yeah, there's a couple of games that came out this year I never got really around to playing, like Neon White, which I've already downloaded on my Switch. Triangle Strategy, which again, I've got downloaded on my Switch. I'll get round to Xenoblade one of these days. I still need to play, the, play for the first and second one first. And I think that's about it for this year. Not many other games I could think that applied to me anyway that I wanted. And as I'm recording this, it's like, what? About a day before Christmas, and I doubt any other games are going to come out this year. And holy shit, is that sports story?